possible economic collapse, Main Street spoke and the House listened. 228 congressional members voted against the White House's $700 billion rescue plan. Yesterday, many lawmakers citing constituent concerns over the plan. For more on Main Street's reaction to the failed plan, we're joined by our friends from across the country, Reese Hopkins, who is a radio host for WRKO 680 AM in Boston. Francine Cuccinello joins us from Louisville, where she hosts a radio show from 84 WHAS, and Kirby Wilbur, who hosts his own show on KVI 570 AM in Seattle. It's so good to see the three of you. I wish it was under better circumstances. Uh, but, <laughs> it's okay, uh, Alexis. Yeah, let's get, let's get started. Francine, ladies first. What are your listeners telling you about this? Are they angry? <laughs> angry. They hate this. And I don't mean dislike, Alexis. They hate this bailout, rescue, economic stabilization act. They're scared. They don't trust. There's a huge disconnect. It's, I've never seen people so adamant before in my life. Yesterday, we were running 93% against, against passage of this plan. Even after the market started to tumble, they only went down to 83% against really? this plan. Really? Interesting. Kirby, are you seeing the same thing? Because I started to wonder yesterday, when the market sold off and we lost $1.3 trillion in net worth yesterday, whether or not the constituents would start to change their mind and realize, this isn't just Main Street. Uh, this isn't just Wall Street. This is a Main Street story. Well, I've got to tell you, Alexis, um, it's greater than 93% here with my listeners. And I was on before the market meltdown yesterday. So we'll go on in half an hour. We'll see what people think today. But we have a large number of people here who are just fed up with a government bailout. They believe that actions have consequences. The market should be allowed to work out. They know it's going to hurt them. They know their 401ks are going to get hurt. They know their jobs may get hurt. But they think the pain now is better than the pain later, and they're very fearful of the precedent of having the government step in to save people, not just a bank bailout, but local government debt, credit card debt. They, they, they bailed out Detroit last week. Our listeners, my listeners, are concerned about the government saying the precedent of stepping in and relieving people from the consequences of bad actions and dumb actions. They think the market should be allowed to work. And they don't want their tax dollars going to bail people out who did stupid things a long time ago. You know, uh, I, I'm watching Reese, and he has been shaking his head the entire time. <laughs> Reese, you're in Boston, and I take it you're hearing the same thing. Yeah, I, I, you, know, I, you know, sometimes I like it when I can disagree with Kirby and I, I can disagree with everyone, but I'm, I've got to be, I'm with them in, in this boat. Uh, every one of my listeners are saying the same thing over and over again. If, if they're in trouble, the government won't bail them out. Why should we bail out these companies? We, we got to sit back and let the bottom fall out on this one. It's pretty much what the listeners are saying. And I can say 100% of my listeners are going, let the bottom fall out. Okay. There's no one's going to allow $700 billion to just go to these banks. Okay. And, and okay. no one say a word. But, but part of your responsibility, the three of you, my favorite radio show hosts, is also to inform them, inform them of the consequences. And, and the consequences here are great. And, and Francine, the Fed chairman talked about more foreclosures, I mean job losses. We, we need to be concerned about job losses because what if the corporations or the small businesses they're working for cannot get the funding to make payroll? I mean, are, are they starting or, or starting to hear those stories that perhaps are not the stories they're hearing from Paulson or Bernanke or Congress. All of the above, Alexis. Here's the thing. First of all, I disagree with Jack Welch, your, your former guest, because people do understand the consequences. But they do not believe that even if this passes, that the government will be able to implement this and change the economy. Look at what the government has screwed up before. Health care, Social Security, how are those working out for us? Right. They can't change right. anything. We don't believe it's going to work. Now, I will tell you what's interesting about Louisville is people, and, and people get the whole, yes, the credit is frozen, but they see that, again, as a, as a Wall Street or, or more big business issue. Locally, small and regional banks are doing very well. Now, our biggest bank stocks yesterday, National City Bank and Fifth Third Bank, both regional banks, they did take hits of 60% and 40% respectively. However, the lending is still going on here to qualified people, and right. that goes back to what my other two hosts were saying. People Kirby. don't want to, you know, to make up for other people's mistakes. Kirby, you, you agree? Go. Alexis, yeah, Alexis, you had a guest on between John Fund and Jack Walsh this morning. You talked about the worry in his face, that you'd seen it. 
And he said he was worried not about the market, but about America. And people started to turn to government, and government being the last bailout and bailing people out. I have that concern, too. I think my listeners understand economics. There are cycles, there's ups and downs, consequences to actions. And sometimes you have to pay for that. We're not guaranteed a good ride and good consequences and good times all the time. And this generation's been spoiled, I believe, because we really haven't had bad economies since the late 1970s. Yep. I remember those bad times. I don't think we're anywhere near that yet. And yeah, there are going to be consequences, okay. but people have to pay for these actions. And people are willing to let the bottom out, as Francine said, yeah. and let those guilty pay. People like Barney Frank up in Boston, Reese, who four years ago said, oh, no problems with feeding me pretty much. I would be there. Look at me. Okay, and, 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 and Alexis, one last thing. My yeah. listeners want to know who's responsible. They want it explained. They want the sy systemic they want changes in necessary. Jail. So we're not going yeah, through this yeah. again. All right, Reese, let me give you the last word. You, your sure. hands have been flailing. What do you want oh, to no, say? Oh, no, no, no. I, listen, Kirby, Kirby's right. Kirby's got the right idea. I think what my listeners are saying is we are sick and tired of rolling the dice on this economy. And this $700 billion bailout is pretty much just going, ah, you know, that's what they're worried about. This is, this right. is nothing more than a crapshoot. Yeah. It's a crapshoot, and they know it. And no one wants to be a part of that. And, you know, Kirby, I love you, buddy, all the way from Seattle. You've got it right. Barney Frank has been a joke in, 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 this, right. in this town when all it comes to this have. whole thing. All right. They all have. This uh, is a one issue that's going to come down okay, to wait. the economy. I want the three of you.